Um, one of the things that's always interested me in a lot of my work is about colonial history and interrogation of colonial history. And part of that is a, a discussion of memory. And so we get questions about why is colonial memory so fallible? Why is it so selective? Why is it so fluid? And although I'm interested in it, one of the things that intrigues me is that it becomes a really complex discussion and in becoming a complex discussion I actually think it lets people off the hook so even you know, liberal or left-minded um, white Australia is that if you talk about memory enough and it goes round and round in circles in the end you can in, in a sense abrogate responsibility for the way that you forget and remember as if it's an external process or if it's a almost a, a psychological biological process which has no sense of agency or control and what I've been thinking about more recently is that while I don't want to simplify it and dumb it down one of the things that I found intriguing is the way that people choose to or decide to imagine a past or imagine an event and how they are equipped to either deny or accept it so that I was watching a television program with the American crime writer Walter Mosley and he was talking about imagination and in his view of imagination it was an idea that really appeals to me is that you put um, an event out there before a public or to a, a person of, from the past and you make a claim to the validity of this event and what his um, idea was is that often the response you get to quite horrific events or in our case the violence against Aboriginal people is that people will respond and saying I didn't realize that or I can't imagine that and as a beginning point I think that's relevant but what it made me think about is that what happens or should happen in Australia is that when you provoke people to recognise these past, these histories, these acts of colonial violence, these attempts to dispossess Aboriginal people, is that once they are provoked to imagination, what do people do with that provocation? And in my experience, the, there are several things that happen. One is that people deny it outright so that they feign amnesia or they feign no sense of responsibility. Two is that they often try and reconstruct it as a, a fiction or entirely suspect itself so it has no validity either in memory or in imagination. Or three, and this is a very common experience, is that they become quite hostile towards you, the person who has provoked them with this um, potential because you have done them a disservice and you have asked them to be responsible or to think responsibly and to imagine this past. So what I think is important for us to consider or import, important for people to consider, when you are confronted with a past that doesn't sit with that homogenous national story or that what I would see as a sanitised story of the past, is once provoked to, the, to imagination, you must take responsibility for what you do with it from that point on. So rather than just throw back an accusation at the, the storyteller that you have provoked me to this and it has made me feel uncomfortable, although that's not said, it's what is thought, is that you must respond with an imagining and an opening, an opening of the mind to consider and think about what has been said to you and then whatever conclusion you reach, whatever outcome you reach, is an outcome that then you must own and you must be responsible for. So I think that what I'd like to see shift in Australia is rather than a what becomes a soft, I think, or a such a fluid discussion about memory, the past and colonial history that we come to no conclusion uh, that people should be provoked to making some responsible conclusion for themselves and then owning that conclusion.